Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. In his Independence Day speech, President Goodluck Jonathan announced a plan to convey a national conference. The decision stunned many Nigerians from left to right. Some have called it a move, a masterstroke of a presidency in trouble, while others have called it a gimmick from a presidency in trouble. Our next guest is the chairman of the President's Advisory Committee charged with the responsibility of formulating the modalities for such a conference. Senator Femi Okuromo represented Ogun State in the Senate from 1999 to 2003. He's a longtime advocate for a national conference and also a leader of the Yoruba Social Cultural Group, the Afeneferi. Senator Okuromo, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, let me, Senator, let me start uh, by asking you. At the inauguration, the president said to you, this is a serious tax. History beckons on you not to disappoint our people. It's been a week now, and um, how, have you, how are you feeling about the historical tax given to you? Are you a bit or are you troubled? I am not troubled at all. In fact, I felt much more than the president that this is a very serious task, mm. a very, very serious responsibility that has been placed on the shoulders of my committee mm. under my leadership. Mm. Because Nigeria needs a national conference. We are being at the forefront. I have been one of those at the forefront of the agitation for a national conference for over three decades. So mm. the struggle did not begin yesterday for mm. a national conference. Mm. But uh, succeeding administrations have always turned the other cheek, turned the other ear mm. to our demands. Mm. But I want to say that the elections that brought us to the, pre the current civil, uh, civil rule in Nigeria, starting from 1999, the elections that were held under Abdul Salami Abubakar. Mm. Well, it, uh, the, uh, Nadeko was opposed to taking part in those elections. Nadeko is an acronym for National Democratic Coalition. Mm. That was the group that really was at the forefront of the opposition to Abaki uh, Asoregi and which opposed him both locally and internationally, and called attention to his dictatorial habits, the way he had been oppressing Nigerians and looting the treasury, and in fact, uh, killing people, many people who are opposed to him. Mm -hmm. It all started with the announcement of the Chief of the last election mm -hmm. of June 12, 1993, which was won clearly by Chief MKO Abiola, but which was announced by the then ruler, General Babangida. Mm. When the people rose up against that announcement, and uh, Babangida felt the uprising was, was more than he could, he could withstand, he decided to step aside using his own words. And Abacha took over the governance. Apparently, there was a ploy that Abacha would ultimately also transmit to a military ruler. Mm. Because at that time, they appointed an interim administration headed by one uh, Mr. Shoneko. Mm -hmm. But in, a, in, a, in about three months, Abacha overthrew Shoneko and became the military ruler mm -hmm. and became the most oppressive military dictator Nigeria has ever had. Mm -hmm. So in, in going to that election in 1999, the Nadeko demanded as a precondition the convening of a national conference. Mm -hmm. A national conference was a demand that before we could even participate in the elections. Mm. But Abu Salami Abubakar persuaded us to please, to please take part in those elections. And that after the elections, when the new government is sworn in, 
We promise them that the first order of business will be the convocation of a national conference. That was a promise that, we, that he made to us. Mm. Now, now, because, because we trusted him as a gentleman, that he would keep his words. That is why we, we took part in those elections mm. at all. Yeah, Senator, we will get to all that. We'll, uh, I, I, we'll get to all that because I know that you, you were sworn in and on October 13th, 1999. Just five months after that, you moved a motion for the convocation of a national conference in the Senate, and, and your motion was defeated. And, and later on, President I Jonathan, eh? I was going to give you the background to that motion. Yeah, most most of our I viewers, was going they. To give you the background I know. To that motion. Okay, okay, okay. And, and most, the background to that motion was, I will go to the Senate without promise from Abu Salami. Because it, it, it devolved upon me as one of the leaders of one of the leading senators that went on the, on the platform of Nadeko to the Senate to move the motion for a national conference. And, I'm, and I moved that motion as you have, have rightly right said. Mm. That is correct. Mm. Now, 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 uh, let, let's let's go because we don't, don't have a lot of time. Let's go into that uh, because you moved that motion and it failed. And then the president, then uh, uh, Bassanjo set up his own committee called the Presidential Committee for on the Review of the Constitution. Yeah, and you became a member yes. of the Joint National Assembly Committee on the Review of the Constitution. Then in 2001, yes. you tried to turn that Constitutional Review Committee into another national conference. And you argued that it yes. was necessary in recognition of the developments in the policy since your earlier motion. And, and once again, yes. you failed. Uh, now, now the Nigerian policy, as we see, continues to worsen, uh, and and some people are saying that you are the right man for this job. The question is, uh, I so. why, why do you want this job, and why are you hopeful that this time something will be different? Well, I'm hopeful that this time something will be different because finally we have a president who is persuaded that indeed we need a national conference. Mm. I'm the right man for the job because out of conviction, I've fought for it for many years. Mm. I've advocated for it both inside the Senate and outside the Senate. Mm. Even after I left the Senate, I continue to fight for a national conference, mm. along with my other uh, colleagues. Okay. So the struggle has never ended. It, it has been a continuous struggle. Okay. Now, now under the platform of the Affairs Ferry mm. and the Unified Unity Forum and other organizations like the Pro-National Conference Organization, we have continued to fight mm. and struggle mm. and demand a national conference. Now, now we'll go into the details so about... The previous president yeah. did, did, not, did, not, did, not, did not agree with us. They, did not, they didn't agree to hold the national conference. Mm. So now that we have a president who has listened to us, we are very happy. We are mm. very delighted. Mm. No, we'll go into the details. Let me, let me ask you, for instance, the sovereignty of a nation yes. is, is in the hands of the people. Uh, who is holding that sovereignty now on behalf of the Nigerian people, and how can the people get it back? The sovereignty of a nation is in the hands of the people. You are right, and it always, it always is, and it remains in the hands of the people. So it's not in the hands of the National Assembly. It's in the hands of the people. It's in the hands. Is it? It's not. Is it in the hands of the National Assembly or the people? Well, it's normally under normal conditions. It will be in the hands of the, of the National Assembly. Mm. But people's complaints also include the National Assembly and the way it is constituted. Mm. People's complaints about the 1999 Constitution include the, the, very, the very manner the National Assembly is composed. Mm. So therefore, the composition of the National Assembly is part of the problems of the, that people are agitating against in the present Constitution. Mm. Okay. Because okay. they believe that with the present constitution, no fair deal can come out of the National Assembly. Mm. Okay, now let's, let's look at what the president said during the inauguration of your committee. He assured Nigerians yes. not to fear that the National Conference will call the integrity of Nigeria into question. He also said that no voice yes. is too small and no opinion is too irrelevant. Now, will your committee listen to groups that, are, that believe that a peaceful dismantling of Nigeria is the way to go? And will they be allowed to come to the conference? Frankly, I don't think any Nigerian believes 
the Nigerians will be dismantled. Oh, there are many. There are many. I can yeah. I can tell you the different groups that are, we know are operating in Nigeria, and they believe that Nigeria should be dismantled, like the the movement for the actualization can, of can Biafra. You please, can you please make sure? So? Can you please make Oh, sure the so? movement for the actual, actualization of the uh, the sovereign state of Biafra. Uh, there are some sections of the OPC that believe that the, the, your, your, your uh, republic is what they want. And some people in the, in, the, in the northern part of the country have also come out to say that they would prefer to, um, to, to have their own country. But what I'm saying is that there are people who every, every time I agitate and say this is what they want. Are they going to be allowed to come to yeah. the conference? You see, these people are fringe groups. As you, have, you have fringe groups in every country and in every society. Mm. There are free groups even within the United States. Mm. There are free groups in the United Kingdom, in France. Mm. In every Western country, you have free groups. So the, 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 group, the groups you have mentioned are free groups within Nigeria, mm. which in Nigeria should be dismembered. Mm. Now, we are talking of the mainstream of Nigerian people. In fact, these people, as far as I know, nobody from the areas we have had today, as of yesterday in Akure, nobody came to demand that Nigeria should be dismembered. Mm. Rather, everybody was trying to put forward suggestions about how Nigeria would be made a stronger and more united nation. Mm. And the growth of my committee is a fact to work out what the motives for the president mm. of how we can hold a national conference towards achieving greater unity for Nigeria, mm. towards, towards achieving greater harmony, mm. towards achieving less acrimony, Mm. And that's friction within the society, mm. achieving greater justice and greater equity. Mm. That is the goal of the national conference. Mm. Yeah, and, and at that inauguration, you commended the president, and you said that his sincerity was obvious because he did not establish a no-go area for your committee. But then, the other day, yes. the president said that, announced that the decisions of the national conference will be sent to the National Assembly for ratification. Uh, doesn't that constitute a no-go area f uh, in, and, in effect, limit and gag your committee? That was not a directive to the committee by the president. It was not a directive to the committee by the president. The, the president can direct us if he so wants, but he has, so far he has not directed us to do anything of the sort. So that's his own the submission. A completely free hand. Mm. It, uh, do you consider that if the I, president's uh, opinion, uh, personal opinion? No, the, 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 the president is a Nigerian, mm. and a very important Nigerian. But I'm saying he has given no such directive. Mm. Even as, as the swearing in, he, he, he emphasized that he has given us nothing like no-go areas. Mm. And he kept re-emphasizing that. Now, now, don't you think that by and expressing... I believe, I believe, mm. I believe, wait a minute, I believe that people may be misinterpreting what the president said. Mm. Because at the... The last stop, the last stop for any output, any work or any work of the national conference, the last stop will always be the national assembly. Mm. And let me explain that to you. That is the last stop. That is, that is like the all end at the national assembly. Mm. The reason is this: we believe that, as I said, the sovereignty rests with the people. So the findings of the national conference will first of all be subjected to a referendum. That is my own personal opinion. Mm. So subjected to a referendum by the people of the land, the people of the nation. Mm. And if those findings are endorsed and approved by the people, it is then they go to the National Assembly to enact it into a constitution. So they will have the final, the final job of enacting it into a constitution. But, but can, so they reject, can they reject what the, the people approved? Can the National Assembly yeah. reject it? Now I will ask you, who is, the, who is the higher authority? Is it the people or the, the exactly. National Assembly? Who is the higher authority? So if, if the people so has... You if, can if, if that the, question. Yeah, if, if, I believe it's the people. If it's the people, why are we going to the National Assembly? Because they are the only ones who can, who can enact the, the, the Constitution. Who can enact the decisions of the Constitution? What if they said they will not? The Constitution has to be enacted. The decisions what? have to be enacted. What if they said they will not? Enacted into the Constitution. I know. What if they said they will not? I will, what, will, what will get to that bridge? We shall cross it. Okay, okay. Now, now here is, uh, Senator, here are some of the opinions of eminent Nigerians on this plan to subject yes. the solution of the National Conference resolutions to the National Assembly. One said that any reference to the National Assembly is an attempt to kill the conference before it takes off. Another one says 
does the president really understand what he's doing? Do you agree with the president's plan to send this resolution to the national conference, uh, the national conference, to the national assembly, or do you think it's a bad idea? I've already told you my view on that. That is what we have just finished discussing. Mm -hmm. I have said that the the last stop, the last bus stop for all, for all decisions will be the National Assembly. Okay. But that will be after it has gone through a national referendum. Mm. Now, now the president said in that speech about in your, during your inauguration that this is a quote that the 2005 National Political Reform Conference produced a number of key recommendations that were sent to the Fifth Assembly which were, however, not perfected. Now, what does the president believe that, what does he see in this current assembly that is different, that makes him think that they will perfect whatever resolution will come out, that the, unlike the one in 2005? You see, there are always many rules to an objective. Mm. The National Assembly has all these uh, decisions to work upon. The National Conference will have its own work cut out well, for it, we take all the items on the agenda. Mm. When all have been done, they are all contributions towards a final constitution. Mm. So all the good aspects that have come from all all sides will be taken will be taken and brought together. Mm. This is what we go before the people in the form of a referendum. Mm. If there are good aspects that have come out of the work of the National Assembly or from the works of the 2005 conference, which are now which have already been packaged by the presidency and sent to the assembly, if there are things there that are found worthy of being the new constitution, they will form, they will form part of the new package that we shall ask the people to endorse in the referendum. Mm. You know, because there are some Nigerians who really believe in this national conference, but they are worried about this idea. They said to me something like, how could a national assembly that could not amend the constitution after months of sitting, even traveling around the country like you are doing now, still they could not. For the past five years, they've not been able to pass the petroleum industry bill. And, and they are wondering, why, why would they believe that this national assembly will be able to implement the report? Especially if such reports will strip them of power. It is not the National Assembly that will implement the report. I've, I've made that clear. Mm. The National Assembly will not, I don't believe the National Assembly is what we shall call upon to implement the report. Mm. If the President agrees with our recommendations and convenes a national conference, the decisions and findings of that conference will go to the people. The people, the ultimate fit or the owners of Nigeria, mm. will have the chance to ratify them. Mm. And when they have ratified them, they pass it on to a, a, a subordinate body. Mm. Because the National Assembly is a subordinate body to the people. Mm. And the job of, that, of the National Assembly will simply be to enact them into a constitution. Mm. Now, uh, after your inaug inauguration, the press came to you and they said that Bola Tinubu was against the National Conference. The report then was that the leader of the opposition party, the APC, uh, considered Jonathan's conference insincere and a Greek gift. That's what he said. And you said to the media that he must have been misquoted. Now, have you been able, have yeah. you had the chance to talk to uh, Mr. Tinubu? And if yes, were you able to convince him that the president is sincere? And if not, do you plan to convince him? Well, it is, I said he must have been misquoted. Because he, are, he too has been at the forefront of agitation for a national conference for more than two decades. It was part of Nadeko abroad when the struggle was uh, was being waged by Nadeko for, for a national conference. Mm. As part of the struggle against military dictatorship, mm. and as a part of the struggle even, even, even since 1999 to convene what we call a, a, a pro national. Uh, Conference of the people of Nigeria. That's what that's for NACO. Mm. So you are, you are the part of the group of that group. You are the part of the leaders of that group. That is why I say must have been misquoted because you have been a believer. You have been a you have been a bishop, a, a pope of that of, of the principle of a national conference. Mm. So when he was quoted as having as being against it, I saw politics in it, and I don't think we want to politicize the issue. Mm. The issue of the national conference is beyond politics. Mm. Every issue, once, once you politicize an issue, then people take very, very funny positions. Mm. And I think that is why in this national conference, we are not involving political parties. 
political parties are not being involved. Nigerians are being consulted in their own right mm. as to what they, how they think we should have a conference. Mm. We are not consulting political parties. Mm. But but have you talked to talk Bola Tinubu at all after uh, since he came back? Yes, uh, certainly. I mean, coming from my immediate from my immediate constituency, I, I had to talk to him, and I've had, I've had a one on one. In fact, not one on one. I went to him with a, a, a delegation of, the, of three people. Two, two members of my committee and another very important member of our, of our community. Mm. We went and had a chat with him to persuade him that the president is, is sincere. Uh, I, I would not say we succeeded 100% mm. in persuading him, but I'm sure his opinion is not, is not longer as rigid mm. as it was mm. when he was opposed to the conference. Mm. I think he's now more flexible about it. Okay. Now, now, uh, two national conferences took place in two French-speaking West African countries between February of 1990 and January of 1993. One was in the Republic of Benin, while the other one was in Togo. The one in the Republic of Benin declared itself sovereign on the second day, making its decision legal and binding. The one in Togo tried, but General Eyedima refused the sovereignty. Now, 20 years after, the while the Republic of Benin is stable and moving forward, Togo is still battling uh, its own demons. Should we learn anything from the experience of these two countries? Well, the first we have learned is that we are not trying to have a sovereign national conference. The conference we are trying to plan for is not a sovereign national conference. And that is part of the experience we have learned. If I want to begin our demands, my, my first mission in December was for a sovereign national conference. But that, that generated a lot of reactions and debates. And from the reactions of my colleagues, from the reactions of the public, from the reactions of Nigerians, between then and now, majority of us at the forefront of a national conference have seen that we will, we will make our case better if we drop the word suffering. Mm. If we don't, people are only being mischievous in misinterpreting what sovereign means. But just to avoid being misinterpreted, we have dropped the word sovereign from our demands. So our demands that prompted the President to not have to convince uh, to set up our committee did not include setting up a sovereign national conference. Mm. There were demands simply for a national conference. So please sit down. Mm. Thank you. Do, 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 you, do you know why people are afraid of sovereign? I know, of course. I know why people pretend. I know, people... People pretend that they cannot be two sovereignties. Yeah, if you say we want to have a sovereign conference, it's an expression of lack of confidence in the present government mm. and in the, in the present institutions of state. Mm. But that is their own understanding of it. That is not our own understanding. Mm. But we don't, we don't want to waste that producing that argument. That is why we simply drop the word sovereign mm. from our demands. Now, um, today is... Uh General Yakubu Gawon's 79th birthday. Sometime in 1967, he led a Nigerian delegation to Aburi, Ghana, for a conference yes. with delegations from the eastern yes. part of Nigeria to save Nigeria from descending yes. into a civil war. Uh, history recorded yes. that, that conference as uh, the last chance to prevent Nigeria from going into an all-out war. Now, we know how it all turned yes. out. Is this conference yes. that you are you are helping to put together uh, the last chance for Nigeria to get it right? And if we don't get it right, are we at risk of having an international body like the UN or AU organizing a conference for us sometime in the future? See, I'm an optimist. I remain optimistic about Nigeria. Nigerians have all the qualities in the world, all the talent, all the intelligence. There is, no, there is no intelligence that is present anywhere in the world that is not there in Nigeria. So I have confidence that Nigerians can get things right on their own. We don't need any international body to come and do things for us when it comes to organizing the national company. Mm. This time I believe we shall get it right. Mm. I'm positive, I'm, I'm confident, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that we shall get it right. Mm. Now, now, you are an engineer, and uh, Newton's first law of motion says that an object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion remains in constant motion unless an external force is applied. Some view the national conference as a kind of external force being applied to Nigeria to change Nigeria's state. 
but but new, new, new things third law says that action and reaction are equal and opposite so have you factored yeah. in the opposite reaction to your committee and the national conference the one that you are going to encounter by this force you are applying to change the nigerian situation yes we have in fact we have always factored in the, uh, the opposite uh, factor. That is why in my in my acceptance speech after the, after we were inaugurated, I made a, a comment that after we have finished this this national conference, which will follow the work of our committee, even the skeptics will, will have changed their mind, even the opponents will have changed their mind, and will now realize that they were wrong all the time. That this is a far worse Nigeria we should have done many years ago. Now, some Niger I'm, 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 as I've said, I believe, I believe that we are on the right path. Mm. Now, some Nigerians say to me, and they've been saying it, that corruption is actually our number one problem, not uh, a national conference. I, I know that the president disagrees with corruption as number one problem. But those people who believe that instead of wasting money uh, trying to have a conference, that we should actually invest it in trying to uh, perse persecute corrupt government officials. Uh, in fact, on my way here, somebody called me and said, that um, I should uh, ask you, why wouldn't the president tackle things like that? Something like uh, deal with this, this uh, allegation of corruption uh, on Stella Odua, the aviation minister, that if the president should arrest her and try her, that he is going to leave a lasting legacy that is more than this jamboree. That's, that's quote unquote how they, they, they try to explain that to me. I want to ask you, what do you say to people like this who believe that corruption is our major yes, problem? I think, look, it is, but they are right that corruption is a major problem, but it is not an either or situation. Mm. It is not saying it's corruption and not national conference, or national conference and not corruption. That would be, that would be my own for anybody to say that. Mm. We need a national conference, yes. But corruption is also a problem that must be tackled, yes. Mm. And I believe that corruption can be tackled. You know, why would the issue of national conference is being tackled? Is, is there any way corruption that the nation... Corruption needs to be tackled. Whether we have a national conference or we don't have a national conference, corruption needs to be tackled. Mm. But, but let me ask you... It's a you. serious problem. Yeah, and it, I'm sure the president himself is aware of this. Yeah. Is there any way so that, that the nation... has nothing to do with national conference. Mm. Is there any way that the national conference will help to deal with the issue of corruption? Well, see, the national conference is easy dealing with issues that are constitutional. Mm. If, it, if it is going to deal with issues of corruption, it can only deal with issues of constitutional measures, mm. constitutional provisions mm. for reducing corruption. Mm. But that is the only way it can deal with it. Now, let me ask. But, but I'm sure that uh, when you look at all the measures that have been taken, uh, the EFCC, the, uh, the other agency, the two uh, agencies of government, the uh, I, the ICPC, ICPC, yeah. ICPC. So we have, we have quite a lot of agencies. Now we talk of the police itself. Even before the ICPC and the ESCC, there was the police. The police was well equipped to handle corruption. Mm. So it is, not, it is not lack of agencies to tackle corruption. Mm. It's the political will. That's a different matter. Mm. Now, Senator, do you know the cost of this conference? I mean, like uh, the cost of what you, they, have, they put in place for your committee? Do you know how much it's costing the country? The, co the, conference, I mean, the conference, we are just trying to, uh, our, our assignment is only a one month or mm. six weeks assignment. Mm. So we don't know what the conference will ultimately cost. Mm -hmm. now yeah, for, as for our own assignment, our own assignment is uh, part of the it's on the two string budget. Mm. Two string budget. But we had we, we hearings, we received the Miranda in Akure yesterday. Mm. Most of the publicity was done locally for us, the people who are, who are very, very interested. Mm. Mm. The accommodation in which we stayed was donated by people who supported us locally. Mm. We, we came back from Akure, as, I've done, as I told you before the start of this uh, interview, mm. from Akure to Abuja, we came by bus. Mm. All of us who came by bus. Mm. So I, I think we are working on the two string budget. Mm. This is not going to cost the nation very much. Mm. Now, um, uh, yeah, that's the next question I was about to ask because your tax required um, uh, is it, it means that you have to travel around the country, and and some parts of the yes. country are not secured. You know, 
you are going to eventually get to Medugri. So uh, we were, I was about to ask you, yeah, I was about to ask if you are traveling with a bulletproof vehicle or something like that. You see, those people in Nigeria are Nigerians. Mm. And every day, Nigeria is doing their business, she goes to Nigeria to go and do their business. Mm. People go there every day and come from there, living their normal lives. So if we want a better Nigeria, and we think we are going to provide that better Nigeria, we should not be afraid to take the same risk that every, every Nigerian is taking mm. to make our country better. Mm. Yes. Senator, one last question. We cannot, be being, we cannot be living in a bullet. We cannot be going around a bulletproof card mm. and say that we want to better Nigeria. I agree. How many Nigerians can afford the bulletproof card? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Now, one last question. There are some news report that uh, is suggesting that the Akure event was largely uh, boycotted by prominent people from Western Nigeria. Um, that some people were saying it was essentially a failure. Is, is, that, is that how you say it? You see, some people are, I'm sorry to use this word, which is very, very, which I shouldn't use online. Mm. But some, some journalists are very, very, means they to so tell lies. Maybe because it's the truth. Mm. Maybe they are the truth, or the, or, the, or the people of some people who don't want the national conference. Mm. Then they go and tell horrible lies. Mm. Now, let me ask you, I don't know how much you know about Nigeria. I will tell you some of the personalities who are present. In the Akure event. I schooled in Akure, so... Mm. Eh? I schooled in Akure, so I what know I, I know a lot of it. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I will tell you of the personalities present in the Akure event. Mm. The Afrikaan leader, and the, many of the Afrikaan leaders who are there, from Chief Ajo, Ajib Ajo, Chief Ulufala, he couldn't be there because he will be rich, but he sent out a memorandum. Uh, uh, the right level of Bishop Bumidi was there, Mm. A lot of, uh, you know, sorry, I just, just keep talking. Mm. And, and everybody who was a leader, a, a leader in Yoruba that was there, mm. all the Sanibari leaders, the mm. uh, Sanibari chief support, the mm. uh, Sanibari chief support, all of them were there. Mm. Even the leaders of the Sanibari, uh, the ARG, the Sanibari renewal group were there. Mm. So who boycotted the journey of Akure was there. Mm. And it was, it was right there on the high table. Mm. So who boycotted? Which leader boycotted? All right. I, I'm happy you clarified that. Uh, Senator o Okurumo, thank you so much for coming to our show. It's a pleasure. And I hope pleasure. Uh, as you go it's along with your job, we hope you succeed and uh, you'll come back and, and tell us how it's going. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. That was uh, Senator Femi Okuromo, who is the chairman of the President's Advisory Committee on the National Conference. He was giving us an update on how it's going. When we come back, we are going to continue our programming. We are going to have our Skype call segment when we are going to discuss some of these um, issues. And still remember, we are going to uh, give you our shows, regular shows, Keeping It Real and Dr. Damages. So stay tuned. Thank you.